final episode here of uh, 2020. And uh, that means it's about time for the holidays. We are glad you're here watching with us. Um, and I am very excited for tonight's episode. So welcome to Zoom Bullshit. So you probably want to know why we are here. We're here because presentations exist as a lifestyle. Those of us who have made them for a living uh, know that they are uh, great. However, these are not great presentations. This is what I refer to as slide hell. Many of them have a wretched design, including the ones that I make. Um, and I'm not going to apologize about it. It's just the way that I am. So uh, how do you watch Zoom bullshit? These are instructional notes for you, the viewer. Uh, remember that all things come to an end. Uh, ask questions, whether you're on Twitch or on YouTube in chat, you can ask questions of our performers while they're presenting and we will answer them. Uh, I prefer weird questions. If you ask normal questions, why are you here? None of us are normal. Why are you doing it? Um, so how did this even happen? This wonderful thing called Zoom bullshit? Well, first it was 2020. Uh, enough said, I guess. Uh, we made this show, it's called Zoom bullshit. Uh, However, 2020, the dumpster fire raged entirely out of control. And I promise you, I had nothing to do with it except for the comedy show, which I think is on that side of me, but maybe it's that side. I don't know how Zoom works. Um, anyway, this uh, was a way for us to pass time, create laughs for you, uh, our most beloved viewers. So, and you know, occasionally it even happens on a birthday and all sorts of weird places, perhaps even Bishkek. Uh, so what the crap is this thing? This is a competition uh, wherein each competitor has five minutes to present about seven slides. We're fudging that today because there are some awfully good slide decks out there. Uh, our presenters today, uh, we're gonna kick it off with Lindsay, uh, then Kevin and Carl, then we're gonna have an intermission, uh, which you want to be around for because that's when we start answering your questions. Then we'll go to the second half with Belaine and Julia. We'll pause for voting. And this is important, not only because it is your civic duty, but also because it determines who the winners are. And the winners present the final slides as a joint effort, which is great fun. So where did these slides all come from? Great question. You donated them and we found them, some of them online. Uh, they are all public domain. Uh, but I have to still learn from somewhere and clicking the random article on Wikipedia is no longer really uh, doing it for me. So you guys send me slides and I get to read them. You can send them to slides at zoombullshit.com. We accept slides in any language, um, but since most of our viewers speak English, most of our slides are in English, except for that one time with that Russian slide deck. Bullshit.com, we accept slides in any language. Your contributions to science and comedy. So. Without further ado, we want to call on to deck Lindsay, who will be presenting our first slide deck. All right, Lindsay, take it away. Hello there. Good evening. I would like to welcome everyone back again to the uh, Thursday Night Drinking Club. This is our engagement wrap up update. I am nicely toasted. Let's get her done. Advanced. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, we got a handful of successes and failures, swings and roundabouts with the engagement as things are going. I just wanted you guys to know that uh, the marketing team uh, has kind of gotten in the way of some of our goals being achieved in 2020, like no names, <laughs> but we just wanted to provide a revised competitive trend matrix for the post Rona environment. <laughs> if you had Rona on your bingo card, drink up. <laughs> Advance. <sighs> ah, Bailey's. Okay. Uh, final thoughts revisited. Uh, I have Danny DeVito here because you guys all know my celebrity crush, right? Okay, so uh, <laughs> given that in the first three days of 2020, uh, the continent of Australia was legit hashtag on fire. <laughs> and we were on the work of, brink of World War III. And we will just, that's where we started. And it's all right. Um, 
<laughs> okay. And we had this much meme, you guys remember Mud the Cat, like the lady living serious emotional trauma turned into common for our enjoyment. <laughs> They're like random government people telling us what to do and they, you know, look at your daughter, your daughter, love everyone, lock them all up. Advanced. Like just looking at your unopened mail, uh, you start to question yourself. You start to say, uh, everything's going right now. What's the um, status quo? And just that symbol, just keep asking yourself that question. Advance. You guys, I'm starting to lose control of reality. So if my spaceship goes out of orbit, you guys be there for me. <laughs> you guys watch the Mandalorian. I never had a single, uh, I never had a single maternal thought until I saw this series, and I started to question my menopause life choices. Anyone else? I can't. Man, I can't. I can't. You guys, really, <laughs> really. Okay. More memes. They can't confront my feelings. <laughs> Remember group presentations in the same room and breathe the same air? Wasn't that wild? Yes, please. And um, basically, um, at one point, um, we all had just a lot of platitudes to share to each other. Happy New Year. <laughs> advance, advance. Okay, who's going to move on? I promised myself I wouldn't get maudlin until I was done with the first bottle. Okay, so here is our consumer behavior matrix post-corona, okay? So, number one important, the most rad thing is chilies to go. <laughs> There's nothing more rad than chilies to go, except maybe, I don't know, TGI Fridays to go. We lost that account, okay? Adopting animals, also very rad because... You got rid of roommate because you were ready to move on with your life, and then you got lonely, and then you got a dog, and you forgot you were allergic. <laughs> and then everyone was baking bread, which was not rad because everyone started putting on carb weight. And then you started having quarantine breakups when you're breaking out long distance relationships that were new horizons and thinking were to follow that. Okay, I, you guys are like boggled by this Matrix a little bit more than I was by the late 90s movie, The Matrix, but just like absorb this. <sighs> so, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just start a project because you're too bored to finish the last project. And then, you know, you could have used lockdown to take that online course at Yale, but you actually use lockdown to contact everyone who ever rejected you and you started baking bread. And then you ended up and you and that is my post corona matrix. I will be in the lobby. I will be sending my battle bands and have a good night. Don't forget to keep on trying. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Up next, we have Kevin presenting. So Kevin, if you could unmute your video. Am I here? And whenever you're ready, take it away. Cool. So, I mean, listen, we're all searching for something, right? I mean... And I think the first thing we really want to look into, and this is just the beginning of what the presentation is, is how to find quite literally a hut in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I mean, the truth is, and listen, I don't want to get real personal here, but it's not just about the hut in the middle of nowhere, which is literally the way I save myself from that shipwreck, which is of course why I'm here, but also, on a figurative level, the hut in the middle of nowhere is that little pace, please, um, sorry, pardon me, I still have malaria. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, it, the hut in the middle of nowhere is that little part in the middle of you that's safe, that like protects you from the, the storms of life. So let's get to the next slide because uh, we're gonna really dig deep here, guys. First, very literally, 
go to a village. Um, that's the first thing you really want to do, uh, specifically the village of Paul Wildeson, um, which of course, is, if you know my story and the, the narrative of my shipwreck and then what happened after that, the village that saved me was Paul Wildeson. And, uh, <laughs> they gave me broth, they gave me love, and they gave me um, a book where I, of course, wrote my poetry, um, which <laughs> I'm going to read you a little of it. Let's go to slide. Let's go to the next slide because this is really going <laughs> to. So here's the thing. And if I mean, if, of course, if you read my book about my uh, shipwreck, these pictures are taken from my book. So I stumbled uh, out of the jungle. And I walked down this road right here, um, leaving Pud Wildeson. Um, and then of course, all right, so the guy, as I think if you read my book, you remember that uh, Milo, who is the old man in the village of Pud Wildeson, he said, you must, and if you remember, his voice is a creaky little thing. And he said, you must go to Dras Kowow. So I said, okay, why do I need to go to Dras Kowow? And he said, you will know once you get there what your purpose in being there is. And he did not lie. So I went down to Carozo, uh, and then on the, I went to the Red Hydrant. And of course, when I was at the uh, Red Hydrant, I made a right. And of course, that is where I found, and this is very important to my whole narrative, slide, the next slide. Let's go to that, because right next to the Red Hydrant, I was there. So that was the thing. So I was on my journey. I was almost there. Um, and then what did I find in the middle of that? My literal hut in the middle of nowhere. But when I opened that hut, okay, inside, of course, with some broth, because they were very keen on broth <laughs> in this particular uh, part of the world. But when I also got there, who did I find? Okay, but there was a little baby in a crib, okay? And I think you all know what the next part of this is. Let's go to the next slide, because this is really going to... Um, right. so, so if you look here where that baby in the crib was is right at the top there was unnamed road which is in fact the name of that road that road is named unnamed road so anyways there's a little baby right and the, the little baby turns to me okay and it has these emerald green eyes okay and this when I say a baby I mean this was maybe a baby that was four or five months old okay foot and mouth you know that kind of baby but then that baby turned its green eyes to me. And can we go to the next slide? Because I think this is really going to. Um... Right. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so then I'm in the house on unnamed road with this little baby with green eyes. And he looks at me and he mumbles. And at first, I don't know what he's saying. And then I realize with his little baby tongue <laughs> and lack of teeth, he's saying, we'll have, we'll have. And I think he's speaking Polish, but he's not. What he's saying is White House. So I then, if you remember the story of my salvation, I walked out of the house, right? And then drifted and found myself at the White House. And then of course, that was the big realization. Slide one, please. Well, a lot of this I can't tell you, of course, has <laughs> been redacted by the NSA and the CIA. But you will find yeah, so that, that, this was the, the note that was written by the, um, the little peasant man who was there. And he handed this to me. And he made, this was a lot of words that he gave me. But what he really did that changed my life was he hugged me and he said, Kevin, return to your home. And I said, where is that? And he goes, everywhere is your home. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, so that's it. That's that's just the beginning. If you buy my entire memoir, you'll see where it goes from there. Thank you very much. Oh, Kevin, thank you so much. Uh, that was fantastic. If we can get Carl up on stage uh, for the last one, then we're going to have before intermission, and then we'll be back with a couple after that. So, Carl, take us away, Doctor. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Dr. Carl. Welcome to the pseudoscience mini lab. Um, it's a little joke we have. It's actually a gigantic facility um, buried uh, several stories underground in 
well, I won't say a desert, a desert. Um, today, we are going to be asking the um, the all important question. Are you psychic? I mean, we've all thought about this as children, at least I'm sure. Um, how much of this, though, can be put down to um, to coincidence and how much is actually inside the power of our own brains? Can we move on to the next slide, please? Okay. <laughs> So I'm big on graphics. I'm a visual learner. Um, it causes a lot of uh, a lot of problems in the laboratory sometimes. Um, a lot of my colleagues like to work with hard data and graphs and numbers and vectors, but I I stick by the maxim that a picture a picture paints a thousand words. And what a beautiful picture this is. Um, my little nephew showed me how to use Blender just before the pandemic got going, and I've just been cranking out these um, these stock images, making a nice little a nice little bit of cash on the side. But um, yeah, I'll post a link to my iStock page. If we could just move on to the next slide. So let's get down to the nitty gritty, the paper, the paperwork. Okay, so first up, for the mini lab, if you wish to participate and find out if you are indeed psychic, um, you will have to do a modified uh, write-up. Uh, this was not my idea. Uh, this was Justine over in operations. Uh, Justine, we love you, but she she is a stickler. She's a stickler. So your mini write-up, uh, your, your your modified lab write-up must include the following. First off, the objective, okay? To determine if one or more people in our group is psychic. Straightforward. Hypothesis, we're just gonna throw out hypotheses for this. This is, um, as I say, pseudoscientific. Um, and I, I, we, we fear that we will lose funding if we try to paint it as anything else. But uh, I think there's a lot, to be, a lot to be learned from these findings nonetheless. Now the experiment itself, this is where you would obviously write up the uh, steps of the experiment that you did, which we'll get onto, um, the data portion of it. Um, we insist that everything uh, is presented in PowerPoint. Uh, you will need to complete uh, all of the requirements in PowerPoint. Uh, you cannot take a screenshot of PowerPoint and drop it into any other sort of presentation tool. This is um, very important for us. Uh, again, um, I say us, it's not so important for me, but I'm working within a team and I am doing my best. Um, I'm sorry, I've been underground uh, uh, for 10 months now, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm dealing with the same four or five people the whole entire time. So um, I'm a little frazzled. Um, con in conclusion of your, of your write-up, answer the questions at the end. Come on, it speaks for itself. Move on, next slide. Oh boy, oh boy, pardon me. Mm. Okay, um, so we've all got our little, uh, our little quotes uh, around the lab here, um, our little catchphrases. The one that's been attributed to me is, I've got a sixth sense about these things. I said it once, it's kind of, I, didn't, I didn't come up with that, um, but um, the rest of the lab group kind of took it and, and rolled with it. So that's now what people say every time they see me. Okay, so traditionally, um, it's always been recognized that people have the five main senses, seeing, hearing, tasting, touch, and smelling. We know all of this. Um, I should point out that um, I lost my sense of touch uh, as a child, um, and it's really been an uphill struggle for me to form human connections. Uh, but that's outside the scope of the, uh, of the presentation. Now, more recently, the scientific community has identified other physical senses. I say scientific community, I'm referring to the mini lab, just me and the guys. Uh, psychic phenomena are based on extra senses that exist from someone else's mind. Extrasensory per perception or ESP for short. I'm sure you guys know all this. Uh, Dale insisted that I, I take a hand-holding approach to this, uh, to this presentation. Um, we love Dale. Dale is great. Uh, me and Dale share a bunk. It's like, we're almost like we've become the same person at this point. Let's move on to the next slide, please. Let's look at some examples of ESP. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen it, but uh, the basic ones are telepathy, telekinesis, precog, clairvoyance, and pyrokinesis. Now, I want to jump straight into pyrokinesis, manipulating fire with just your mind. I mean, these days it's so easy to set a fire, you know? Um, uh, our ancestors would have had to spend quite a while trying to set up fires. But these days you can do something as simple as spill your monster energy drink on my workstation and the whole thing will go up in flames. The sprinklers in the mini lab will go off and we will lose months and months and months of work. Again, you know, Dale, we've just become so close. It's hard to stay. It's hard to stay mad at Dale. He's just, he's just such a great guy. Let's, let's move it on. Let's move it on. I'm, um, it's getting warm down in the lab. Okay, next slide. Too legit to quit. Now, Dale insists uh, that grammar is redundant, syntax doesn't matter. Um, he doesn't care that the word two in this context should have two O's in it. And I, much as I disagree with him, I respect the hell out of 
Dale as a scientist, as a pseudoscientist, as a roommate, as a bunk mate. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let that one slide. Now there are legitimate scientific legitimate Jesus Christ scientific tests for each type of proposed ESP. These were designed by real scientists at recognized universities. Um, everyone down here has been kicked out of at least one of these so-called recognized universities. Um, so I don't know how much sway uh, any of their research holds. That's I'll leave that up to you. Um, it might be interesting to note that both the USA, the CIA, the DOD, the Soviet Union, all they, they tried to gain an edge in this during the Cold War, but um, I think they stuck too much to real scientific institutions and not kind of bespoke pseudoscience. Let's move, I'm running out of time. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, oh boy. I miss the sunshine, you guys. Does anyone else miss the sunshine and, uh, and touch? I miss touch as well. Um, so the blue devil theory, I'm really gonna have to hurry and wrap this one up. Uh, you can Google this yourself. Um, if you spend enough time in a mini lab uh, with nothing but blue lighting, you will start to see things. You might start to make projections from your own mind on what do these things represent. If you were brought up in a very religious environment like I was, these might manifest as devils. Um, DM me, DM me. If, if you've been experiencing any of this, please, because I, I'd love to talk to literally anybody else. Uh, can we please move on to the final slide? Uh, these are my Xenar cards. This is a board game I've de been developing. A bit of a left turn. Uh, this is, hasn't really got much to do with uh, with the rest of the presentation. But if anyone wants to help me work on uh, game development, um, this is just the first step. I don't want to give too much away. There's a lot of uh, a protected intellectual property here. But if the symbols on these cards are things that you have seen in some of your less lucid moments, I really want to hear for you, uh, from you. Go to zoombuilbullshit.com. You'll find all my details there. Uh, this is Dr. Carl out. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Carl. If we could get everybody up on stage, it's now intermission. And this is the part of the show where we answer your questions. So, uh, Summer, what questions have we got from the chat? What is Kevin's favorite quote that what? he's adopted from someone else as if it was his own? Can you say Never. that again? Can, what was the question? Sorry, repeat the question. Ooh. It, it cut Kevin's out, it cut favorite out, it. quote that's from someone else, but he adopted it as if it was his own. Okay. Lindsay? Never beat yourself when you're stranded in a Desertic kitchen. Eat all that exists, dude. Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is the quote, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Not obviously. your quote, but whatever. No, the quote that I've adapted as my own. I thought it was his. Right. Yeah, um, totally me. More important question. Why was the Polish baby left unattended? <laughs> Pierogies. Hate. Babies. <laughs> so they never nurse them properly. What? What? Nope, well, that was very serious. Um, I, I suppose we'll just move on to the next question. Uh, is Dale, uh, the bunkmate, Carl's bunkmate, single? And if so, why? Loneliness kills everybody. Hard. Like? Pain. Therefore, Dale imagined his friendship ending. Mm. Mm. Oh dear. Or Dale. A, a more or positive Dale. question. <laughs> the inventor of PowerPoint dies. How do you mourn? Proprietary apps should always be a 
exceptionally honored by copying every single line onto the code. Hmm. Mm. All right, guys. Thank you so much. That was intermission. I uh, just want to make sure it's not all straight the whole time through. So if we could uh, keep Belaine out, but everybody else, go ahead and hop off stage. Uh, time to get back in here before you miss the show. Belaine, you ready? Take it away. Welcome, everybody. Um, I know this has been like long overdue, guys. I just been so busy um, keeping my lifestyle. Um, today, I want to talk to you about how to do some badass copywriting, how to attract your favorite clients without even trying, basically having them coming to you. Laura Long, you know, it's been um, a great um, co-creator of, of everything that I produce. She's just the person behind basically the doing. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's dive into it. There's, there's a lot to cover today. Uh, if you please can continue clicking, Laurie. Um, you sometimes, when you're thinking of how to attract clients, right? You, you're thinking, who are their favorite comedians? How can I make them think that uh, I am like them? What makes them so funny? Um, what are the other things um, that, that you could put in their minds? What are the things that they need to see in you that they just didn't know? This is the mentality that we're trying to think about when bringing new clients. So I know you're all gonna think, man, this, you make it sound so easy, but this is incredibly hard. George Carlin used to say the same, right? But it's the stuff, it's the stuff you do that is gonna be in the end what makes you succeed. So <laughs> keep thinking about it, keep get, trying to get in, into people's mind when they're talking to you. Don't really pay attention to what they're saying. Just try to imagine who's their favorite comedian, why make them so funny, and just keep saying stuff often. This is gonna really get <laughs> Next slide, please. Yeah, they're, they're gonna have probably tons of thoughts and feelings. Don't care. Ultimately, they're gonna forget themselves about them. You need to make sure that they don't feel understood. That's not the whole point of it. It's about you coming across as the, the badass. If you go to the next slide, you're gonna see as well, your show is to show that, you know, after all of this process of trying to make them laugh, trying to not care about what they're feeling, you need to wrap up at the end, making them feel understood. So it's almost as if you let them, leave them wanting for more. That's how they're gonna call you back. That's how they're gonna tell you, sure, I want to I wanna be part of your portfolio. If we go to the next slide, you're going to see a bit of these examples. Some of them, you sometimes find them saying, you know, but I'm not a good writer. How, how am I going to do badass copywriting? Um, it's a normal thought. If you have this kind of things, I just need to tell you, it's going to take you a long time to, you know, get good because... It's all about believing in yourself and it's all about finding someone like Lisa who can do the writing for you and in the end, you can just be the face of it. <laughs> Go to the next slide, please, Lisa. Um, yeah, you know, this is a perfect example. Someone that put tons of years on studying uh, and, you know, she feels like she speaks one-on-one -on -one to her clients that they, she can be herself and show her real point of view to people. She's obviously not closing a lot of deals herself. Yeah. That, that's an approach that's never gonna work. But at the end of the day, you know, this is what, what sometimes people are looking for when, when, when they're looking for writers. If you wanna stand out, if you really wanna be different from the hundreds and thousands that have done this type of careers, you need to come out strong. You need to be the one believing in yourself before they do. If we go to the next slide, here I'm trying to summarize the, the key thoughts that you need to take out. If there's nothing else you remember today, 
know your audience, number one. Second, and you know, it takes a little bit for the slides to charge. I know, Lisa, you're doing a great job, but <laughs> who exactly are you talking to? That is your point number two, you need to be very clear. You know, not everyone is looking for a therapist. And I, like we said, you shouldn't care about people's feeling to begin with. Um, number three, grad school versus real life. Like I just said before, Lara might've been great at her studies. I don't think she's gonna get along as a copywriter. I don't think she's gonna take lots of clients her way. And fourth, you never forget. <laughs> if you go really, really deep into the thinking, you are gonna have to find cognitive behavioral therapists. People that <laughs> can really understand PTSD and other traumas and can look into trauma type and can say, you know what, I'm going to write about your story. <laughs> this, you know, we've, we've had a couple of cases when presenting this and people open up more than we were looking for. So, you know, if you're dealing with any emotional or health issue, you find help navigating it outside of this presentation. Um, there's a ton of great resources out there. Um, we're not the people to help you with this. Um, we're here in a non-judgmental space, so don't judge us for not wanting to help. There's a ton of other therapists out there that are gonna do a better job than us. If we go to the next slide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't have time. <laughs> Also, don't care to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> then, one of the last points that you need to think when bringing those clients, when doing your badass copywriting, is that helping kids, teens, and their parents to reduce meltdowns is a very, very honorable cause. This is just one example of, of how your copywriting can, can come along a very clear way. This is the type of thing that we like. This is the type of thing that you should be aiming for. It doesn't have to be very well thought. You can stay shallow and superficial in what you're actually saying, but you are going to be much better regarded if, if you're if you're making it about themselves. All right, thank you so much, Belaine. And <laughs> now we've got Julia bef right before voting. So Julia, if you'll come right on. And when you're ready. Stop. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Will. Thanks, up everyone. Hope you're doing great. Uh, Yep, it's been a long, hard day. My mom calls me Julia. The rest of the world who respects me <laughs> call me Dr. Daniel R. Roman. I am a <laughs> geodesist and um, I work for the National Geodetic Survey, positioning America for the future. Um, anyway. We're just gonna get into the meat of it today. Organizational alphabet soup by GOs and GOs or GAs. A little, little, little trigger happy there on the clicking, but I thank you. Anyway, oh, so National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, right? National Ocean Service. Am I right? Geodetic Survey, what, who gives a fuck? Okay. <laughs> what we care about is the world as a whole. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, abbreviation, okay? Abbreviation. Oh, what's next? <laughs> next? Let me guess. Oh, abbreviation. Listen, okay? I, we're, I am tired of making things small, all right? Making them OCSs, NGSs, COOPSs, and OOAs, okay? I don't want the world to be small the way my mother makes me feel small. All right? Next slide. 
<laughs> if this is as triggering for you as it is for me, then good. Because that is how I want you to feel. I want this to hurt. Okay. I want to keep hurting. Because what I'm here today to tell you is that we are positioning America for the future. Enough of this bull crap. All right. Enough of it. Next. Next slide. Get it out of our faces. We don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> we fucked with my slide. <laughs> Eric, I, I'm sorry. You know what? I asked my intern to help out, and it's just um, clearly he's <laughs> my emails. Okay, this was between me and my therapist. I just want to just. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yep, it's really funny, Derek. Alphabet goddamn soup. Okay, is where we're at today. Next slide. All right. So what is the intent of this, okay? It was not just to spam you with acronyms, but it was to get you to feel something. <laughs> feel it inside. How did all of that make you feel? Did it make you feel small? It made me feel small, okay? And it's really, it's really at the bottom of it, at the real, at the root of the crux of it. It's why NGS engages with these groups. Why do the National Geographic Societies engage? What do they have to gain? Okay. And what does this mean for the United States of America and for Daniel? Next slide. Oh, okay. Geospatial data, geospatial data. Do you know of this? No, neither do I, okay? But it's real. And what it does is it seeks to ensure that all government data is collected in a basket that I wove myself. <laughs> Currently, I mailed it to them and they better take me seriously, okay? I sent a picture of it to data.gov and I sent the actual physical basket because you can't trust no one to the government, to the Federal Geospatial Data Committee did he, that resides in the government. Next slide. <laughs> That's the government. <laughs> that is the government. If you look really closely, you can see the president's face peeking through those little slats. He's always watching. <laughs> okay. And to the far right, my mother, she's also always watching you. At the very top, we've got the people who steer the ship. Underneath them, we've got the executive people, okay? We've got the office. Then there's this coordination group that, I promise you, people are going to tell you I'm crazy. They're going to tell you I'm crazy, but I promise you I'm not crazy. They coordinate everything. They have your address. They have your cadastro. Do we know what that is? No, we don't. They own the cultural resources. They make 3D versions of nation elevation, all right? They have homeland infrastructure and they are in our oceans. Do you understand me? They are in our oceans and they are in our fish. That's how small it gets. Okay? So none of this cross cutting, none of this zigzagging. We're watching you. Next slide. I don't know if you're ready for this. Okay? I do not know if you are ready for the subcommittees, but I think. You know, what I am here to do today is really just to open your eyes to the honesty of it, how real it gets. It goes from a 3D elevation, think stars, planets, aliens, my mother, and then move down to vegetation and wetlands, to the grass and the roots where we come from. Okay, this is all data. It's big data. And I don't want, I don't want any of you, I don't want any of you to feel small. <laughs> now, any of you know hot inside? And it, next, next slide. It's just, I just, this is all to say, okay. I am the Federal Geodetic Control Subcommittee. It's me, <laughs> and I, and I, I would just like to be open, and I'd like to repent for my sins. So you know, if you'd like to you know, bring in the NSRS or if you'd like to bring in the FGCS or the AAPT or the what's in it for me or the who DPD 
or the SPCA, go for it because you deserve better. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Julia. That was fantastic. Uh, it is now about that time. You should go to vote.zbshit.com or vote.zoombullshit.com. You choose whichever one you want to type into your little browser window. And here's the deal. While you are busy voting, I'm going to be busy trying to have a cute off with these kittens. Did it work? Let's try again. <laughs> no? Okay. The kittens are all going to win. There's a lot of them and only one of me. Oh my Aww. God. There are a <laughs> many kittens. Dear God. Well, anyway, get to voting, you slackers. And while we're doing that, uh, we're going to answer a couple more questions. But first, uh, please give us more slides. Um, I just like them. It's a fact. You can email them to slides at zoombullshit.com. That email comes in directly to me through the pipes of the internet. If you've missed part of the show, don't worry about it. You can catch up. Our YouTube channel is at youtube.zoombullshit.com. And if you just love us, Facebook page, at Zoom Bullshit. And uh, I know who our next president is now and forgot to change that on this. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Four more years. <laughs> Damn it. Um, Stop the steal. At least you can email me at sobbinginconsolably at zoombullshit.com. It works. Okay, before we get our winners up here, let's answer some more questions. Everybody else, get out here, and then I'll be back to announce some stuff. Okay, why are kids and their parents having so many meltdowns that they need a badass copywriter? Oh, children. Must. Children. Always. Think Must. About. Themselves. Always. However, PTSD is omnipresent. Therefore, adults could maybe indulge babies. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. Yes. Indulge babies, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. How much do you love science and how much does it love you? Science turns. Hey. Fucking on. Majorly. But pseudoscience. <laughs> However, is Exciting. I love chiropractors. <laughs> oh. Acupuncturists are hot. Strikingly hot. Mm. Poke mm. me harder. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes. Always harder. Lindsay, Why do we poke? need oh, a homeland infrastructure in our fish? S say it again, please. Why do we need homeland infrastructure in our fish? Uh, of course, yes. <clears throat> Rivers flow. Lakes don't. Therefore, we love infrastructure, fishing in our waters. Mm. Mm. Get one last question up there and then we'll look at the results of our votes. Uh, 
All right, all right. It's, it's a lot of different questions to choose from, uh, but I feel we, like we, we have we to know go the with to all of them. Mm -hmm. Is Julia a trained basket weaver? <laughs> basket weaving. Is hard working for dexterous Julia <laughs> and during the quarantine she wove countless baskets Bitches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? All right. All right. The results are in. Everybody off stage except for me. Um, we're going to announce some winners. It's about that time, isn't it? Aren't you very excited about that? I'm very excited about that. Um, okay. So uh, the votes are in, very excitingly. Uh, in third place, but not presenting this evening, unfortunately, is Kevin, who presented Hut in the middle of nowhere. Uh oh, I've been told what? to wait by God on high. What? Don't know what to do. What? Not about you, Will. Not about me. It's not about you. It's not about, always about you. Else. It's okay. What happened? Can I, can I go? You can go. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so in second place and presenting tonight will be Carl. Oh, yeah. First yeah. place for the second episode in a row is Julia, who yeah. presents acronyms of the U.S. government. <laughs> Boom. So if I get Carl and Julia up on screen. Hello, Carl. Hey, colleague. Are you ready Hello. for this presentation? Yeah, yeah, it's a lifetime in the making. Mm -hmm. Take it away, guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get this let's mm. get this going. Oh <sighs> yeah, this is one that's really close to both of our hearts. Um neither oh. of us neither of us own cats. No. And we both hated the musical. Um but we felt that the best way to display our love for cats was to do a presentation about it. So uh, let's, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I just, um, I just, oh, breaks my heart. <laughs> me too, me too, oh man. Oh, cats, cats, you know, there's a lot to say about them. And, you know, I think we should just dive right in. Yeah, okay. yeah. We should just dive. Before we do, I just want to say, uh, me and Julia uh, talked for a long time about whether or not to include any photos of cats in here. And I don't want to spoil it, but I'm happy with our decision. Let's, 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 let's keep going. I am very happy. <laughs> Don't give away any surprises. Oh, I I did that. I this little artwork I did that, Carl. Aren't you impressed? I it's so beautiful. It's almost as beautiful as like any aspect of a cat. I know. My there we go. Okay, so this one. Oh! This this these are both named Eliza. Um, that's also named Eliza. Mm -hmm. Wait for mm -hmm. it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. It that's. Gertrude. It's a lot. It's it's Gertrude. It's Gertrude. <laughs> yeah. Three three Elizas and a Gertrude. They are cats. My favorite is Eliza too. Yes. And um, what you can tell from these cats, and this is really what we're getting to the meat of today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is that they are a representation of you as human beings. Mm -hmm. I'd almost go further to say further than that and say it's not so much a representation, but in the same way that like. Um, uh, Jesus's body became the the bread and the wine. Like that's how I feel the relationship between me and cats is. Yeah. Yep. So that <laughs> like <laughs> even like owning a cat, I don't know if I could really ethically do that. Um, because I am cat. We all are. Right? You know, Carl, we've we've spoken about this. You yeah, know? I know. You can be you can be as many cats as you want to be, human beings. Okay. And I I really hate to just be calling you out in front of this incredible audience right now. Okay. And in I, front of Gertrude too, who just arrived late in the scene. I'm just so tired of you speaking about <laughs> yourself like this as though you cannot be cat and cat and have a cat. I just I'm I've been doing a lot of soul searching. I 
Maybe let's do you want to move on with the presentation? Yes, we can discuss okay, this afterwards. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll have this later. Yeah. This is obviously a subject that's very close to all of our hearts, uh, to both of our hearts. And um, um, this was always going to be emotional. Let's just keep going. Okay, so we've got Pushin in here uh, on his little laptop, uh, hiding from the world. I think we can all identify with Pushin here. Uh, mm -hmm. Pushin has put on the quarantine 15, obviously, and is <laughs> hiding from the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Pushin's chin has kind of melded with the rest of Pushin's body. And um, it's kind of like an allegory for all of us right now, I think, right? It is. Ne ne the next image is my absolute favorite. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Great transition work, by the way, as well. The... Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The course paid off. Just, just a little background. Julia was worried that thematically the beehive, the, the beehive pattern wouldn't work with the cats. But I'm like, uh, I, oh. every cat I've ever known wants to play with bees when they see them. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Hazers is all they are. Just, mm -hmm. You know, to get the, 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 the meat of it out of the way, okay? Mm -hmm. British cat facts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What about is British cat fact. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've got Northern Ireland. Remember British? <laughs> don't British. don't remind me. Sorry. <laughs> Northern Ireland is not Ireland, and Carl would very much like everyone to know that. So, <laughs> um, that is my position, and I feel very strongly about it. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a controversial position either. <laughs> Also, Julia, Julia wanted everyone to know that South Africa is not Africa. Otherwise, oh. it would be called Africa, right? Oh, God. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is exactly. Thank mm -hmm. you, Paul, for remembering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you feel strong about that. Anyway, cats are owned by 17% of British households and Northern Ireland, Ireland households. Um, and, um, yeah, the, the total number of cats, it's a lot, right? 7.5 million cats. <laughs> I'm as surprised as you are, Julia. And you and I don't have any. No, I, we, we wouldn't even impact the numbers very much, but we still, they won't let us have cats. Nope. They won't let us have cats anymore. No, nope. no. Nope. But what's really, really good to know, and this is kind of where we're getting to and hoping that um, you'll see why it's worth investing in us and in our in our project and in our, just, just us, really just like our life's commitment is that the most expensive cat to insure is a short hair cat. Um, it can be up to 20 pounds and 76 pennies yeah, a month. That's, that's what they use. Um, and it's a lot. But um, throughout this presentation, Carl and I are going to show you why we're worth that amount of money from you. Yeah. I would also <laughs> like to say that I think this is a travesty because as everyone knows, like the easiest way for a cat to die is when you accidentally set it on fire when you're minding it. Um, and <laughs> short haired cats are a lot less flammable in my experience, in our experience. Um, we've had very little uh, uh, fire based accidents with any of the short haired cats that have been in our stead. Um, let's 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 move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, so we just thought you, we should have more cat facts. Uh, how about we like we practice? We just rattle through these one uh, trading off. I'll go first. A group of cats is called a clatter. Cats make hundreds of different sounds. There are more than 500 million domestic cats in the world with approximately 40 recognized breeds. Like humans, cats have a dominant paw. During the time of the Spanish Inquisition, <laughs> Pope Innocent VIII condemned cats as evil and thousands of cats were killed. These widespread killings of cats led to the ex ex an explosion of the rat population which exacerbated the effects of black death. <gasps> cats are North America's most popular pets. There are 73 million cats compared to the 63 million dogs over 30% of households in North America are a cat. A cat can jump up to five times its own height in a single bound. A cat has about 12 whispers in each of its face. We didn't work on the timing very much, but I think we're doing okay. We've only got uh, seven more slides to go in about 30 seconds. So let's just keep, let's keep that pace. Let's do that. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. I hope. Dude. Oh, we've got no German cat facts. I'm so sorry. No, no, nor no Irish cat facts. No African or South African cat facts. <laughs> we couldn't get the data. Um, yep. Here's just some cats for you to enjoy. Let's we trade them off. Small party love. kitties. Cats your real thing. <laughs> Kitty's looking for cuddles. And we love fluffy ones. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, arguably the ultimate cat would embody all four of these traits. You know, a little party kitty who reaches for things, love cuddles, and is fluffy. But they say there's someone out there for everyone, you know? And I'll just <laughs> cat. Just a reminder, our PayPal is zoombullshit.com. That's, that's, our, that's our PayPal. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. Oh. Mm. Uh, little David Bowie cats. Yep. 
Yeah. So basically what I did was I took my face and Carl's face and I put them through to find out what our cat babies would look like. And this is how they came across. Mm -hmm. I'm not sorry mm -hmm. about it. We're going to have cat twins. Uh, and we won't apologize for that. What Carl I will apologize for is the black text on the black background. No, it's my bad call. That's my bad. <laughs> no, no, because I okayed it. I okayed it, you know. But look, I put in a technology. So let's go. It's 6 a.m. Time to wake up. Look at my majestic butt. It's <laughs> sit on your face. Oh, did you mix this up with my the Valentine's poem to you? Oh, until you're awake. Oh, God, no. Oh, this boy. So They're very similar poems, but... Okay, just go race through it. Race through it. I'll lick your hair. Oh, oh. I, love licking, I love licking your hair. I know you do. Oh, uh, or I'll try the stare. She loves the stare. I love it. I do. Oh, wake up, wake up. Lovely day. Wake up, wake up. It's time to play. <laughs> oh, we can't. Oh, God, okay. What? What? No, you can play. Okay. You can play with someone sitting on your face. It's... <laughs> let's let's move on. Let's move on. Flat. I'm getting I'm getting very heated and embarrassed here. Oh, I'm s I didn't I thought oh god. It's okay, this is Sam. He is unsinkable and um he was actually on a German battleship. It's incredible and um I cannot believe everyone knows about our sex life. Next one. Next slide. Uh all ball. I mean that's another that's another sex move I've been working on. Um but I, evidently we're not allowed to share that, so let's keep going. <laughs> Actually, this one's fine. This one's Larry. Larry is not a sex move. Larry really like served the cabinet office in Downing Street for forever. And I, um, I've been trying to develop a sex move based on Larry's life's work, but um, oh, I have yeah, like, it's oh, I'm next, getting nowhere with it. Next, next slide, please. Let's keep going. It's another poem. I'm. I sincerely hope that this is not another. Okay, there we go. Goddess of cats. That's what you called me last night. You are the you're my goddess. I'm the goddess of cats, and it's I, I am a cat. Let's keep going. We don't don't have time for all this information. No, just I keep keep moving. Yeah. This is like this is a bit like when you say that my sexy chat should be like punchier. You know, it shouldn't be subdivided into paragraphs and clauses and subsections. But I've got a lot to say. You I know, know. there's. Some famous cats. Um, There's little bub. Um, grumpy cat. R.I.P. Um, uh, well, I mean, do you mind me sharing that little bub is what I call my penis? <laughs> you can tell them. You can tell them what you call it. You can tell them what you call it. I don't mind. Yeah, coupe Lagerfeld. All right. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I, yeah, I, she's the insinuation is that I've got a pretentious French penis, but let's just, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. <sighs> oh God. Okay. This is the real cats. Okay. This is cats. And why did they make a cats movie? There's all the reasons. Uh, they're available on our on our website. <laughs> what I will say is that um, if you are going to a swingers party and the theme is cats, be sure you know which type of cats they're talking about. I'll leave it at that. Next slide, please. Um, and also get your inoculations against toxoplasmosis if you spend a lot of time naked around cats. Um, <laughs> Julia, you want? Uh, so yeah, I guess on that, I just want to um, share my deepest, uh, sincerest apologies for the bedroom talk. Um, what can I say? Carl and I are very sexually active. Mm. Um, we just do it, you know. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, what this is really about is that short head cat that we need in our lives. So if you'd like mm -hmm. to send us mm -hmm. that cash. I'd also like to apologize for forgetting to turn off our live stream uh, last time we were practicing licking our butts. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I, like I'll take some of the blame, but you do need to monitor your children's uh, internet time as well. We can't control that for you. you did <sighs> On that note, um, I think this went pretty well, Julia. Yep. All right. Sign out because you and I need to have a talk, Carl. We do. We do. I'm, I'm in for it tonight. I'm in yes, for it tonight. Are. Thanks. Yeah. Hats off to you guys. That was something licking good. Um, <laughs> we are almost done here. Uh, hope you've been really enjoying it.
Thank you guys, our performers who were absolutely wonderful tonight. Uh, Lindsay, Kevin, Carl, Berlin, and Julia, you guys were rock stars. I also want to thank our brilliant tech genius, Summer. She makes all of this stuff uh, happen in the background. You, it's her voice you hear talking about the chat. And she, you can see me on your beautiful screen. And we want to thank you guys, our viewers, because you are the ones who make this happen. If we didn't have people paying attention to us, we'd probably go have like productive lives and stuff, but <laughs> no reason to have that. Uh, please give us more slides. You can do this. It's free. Go on the internet. Look for ridiculous slides and send them to slides at zoombullshit.com. Uh, that's how we get them, and that's how we make these presentations, and that's how it all works out. Uh, if you have questions, nope. Fuck off. It's <laughs> night. And if we remember from a presentation earlier tonight, uh, there's drinking to be done. So I'm taking my scotch. And I'm going to go have myself a Thursday. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you next year on Zoom Bullshit.